right what's up guys welcome to dry frame studio we're back with another tutorial it's been a while it's been a while so we are going to do an update to the camera calibrator in cinema 4d all right so let's just go ahead and jump in so today we're going to start out in premiere pro and the reason being is the footage that i have is red footage the footage needs to be converted to an image sequence the first thing you want to think about when working on a project like this is how i want it to be exported for me, I'm going to go ahead and create a sequence at 1920 by 1080. The footage that I have is 6K, shot at 50 frames per second. I'm putting this in a 1080p timeline for a couple of different reasons. One being that it saves on render time. Two, um, downscaling from 6K actually preserves more detail. And three, better compression. And I'm going to go into my source and just increase my ISO 2000. And so I got the footage where I like. I'm going to go to File, Export, Media. We're actually going to export this out in stills. So after you've converted your footage to stills, you want to interpolate that footage one more time back into the frame rate that it was originally shot at. Then you want to go into Cinema 4D and before you do anything, you want to hit Control or Command D and open the project settings and you want to change that frame rate to what the footage was shot at. And then you want to open your project settings and set your project settings to the same frame rate. That way everything is consistent. And for me, I'm going to leave my frame rate at 30 frames per second because I'm lazy and I one, don't want to render out that many frames and two, I forgot. So we're gonna go ahead and fire up Cinema 4D and switch the renderer to Redshift. We are going to create a camera, then we're gonna right click that, go into the tracker tags and click camera calibrator. We're then going to go to our output and adjust that to 1920 by 1080 because that is what I exported this sequence in. I'm gonna click X, click back into our tag. All right, let's go find this file. Ignore my name and convention, don't be like me. Go put a protection tag on your camera so in case you move it. All right, let's work on calibrating this scene. First, we're gonna add a grid. As you can see, I'm just grabbing points and aligning them to lines within the image. This will help the computer figure out what is X, Y, and Z. Make sure you back the points to a more contrasted area of the image just to help the computer out. Now that I have the grid roughly where I want it to be, I'm going to shift click on the lines to determine which axis I want it to be. Red being X, green being Y, blue being Z. I'm going to click and make this the X axis. Look over here. We already have some of this being solved. Now we're going to add a line for the Y axis and I'm going to align it to this pole. And you can add a few different lines in to help build out your scene to make sure you're getting accurate tracks. You want these to be green. Let's go ahead and add in our pin. And this is where we want objects to come in. So I'll put mine right there. All right, we'll do create camera mapping. Now that we have pretty much everything um, solved, if you could actually remember your camera focal length, that will help as well. After you've created the camera mapping tag, let's jump into the camera and then create a plane. That looks good. Now that I have the base completed, I'm gonna jump into another scene and copy a 3D model that I've created and add it back into the scene just to save on time. Perfect. All right, so I'll jump back to do the lighting portion, but overall, this is starting to look good. So let's see if I can rotate this so you can see the inside of it and I do think I want it to be a little bigger okay. 
Now I am going to go to redshift lighting and we're gonna just do some quick lighting here. We're gonna go to our dome light and we're gonna bring in an HDRI, but I actually had a 360 camera and we're going to use that to give the lighting information. If you're gonna use a 360 camera, make sure you place the camera where the object is gonna be and not where your physical camera is. I made that mistake. Just making a tad bit brighter and then we're gonna hide that. Now we can go into our camera, go to background, override, and this is where we bring in those images. And if you don't have a 360 camera, these will be also perfect for adding to the HDRI. You're gonna just, instead of, uh, you're gonna switch to the animation tab, and go to simple, and then detect frames. And essentially you'll do have the same thing, but the video. So you'll, the actual still frames will be playing like a video. So it'll be constant lighting information. So you can do it that way, or you can do a 360 camera. It's whichever one you prefer. Um, for me, I'm gonna jump back into camera calibrator, and excuse me, into the camera, background, and just do pretty much what I said over here. Simple to take frames. That looks good. Now we're going to, on our plane, redshift material, matte, general, Enable both of that and the shadow. Now we can focus on this. And this is where you can do some little tweaking where if you have more measurements, push this down just a little bit. And I'm getting to line up with that hard edge. All right, I'm going to fast forward through this part of me just making a few tweaks. As you can see, I am creating figures to help me with scale, just to sell the realism. So I am going to bring in a infinity light or a sunlight, whatever you call it. We're gonna rotate that around. I'm gonna adjust the brightness to the scene and then I'm gonna take the color from the sky and use that as our color for our light and look at other things in the scene to tell you where the shadows are see camera mapping and then we're also gonna go for Nelly see bump So these are the layers I'm gonna be working with right now. Plug that into the bump. And for the camera map, same thing. So we're gonna go find the bridge. Animation, simple. Detect frames. Let's plug into my bump. Cool. Now here, we're gonna put this in the roughness weight, I believe. Reflection weight. Just bring that down just a little bit. Just give your um, reflections a light fall off. So that's pretty cool. For this light, just bring this sucker down. And then we're gonna go to the base color and we're gonna steal this from the actual concrete. And the last thing I'm going to lower the IOR because there's not many, that, not that crazy of a reflection, increase their roughness. All right, I'm going to fast forward through this part. This is just me tweaking the design a little bit. 
I am positioning the cup where I want it to be. And I'm also adding a plane on that back wall to be a shadow catcher. Uh, just adjusting the scale, everything like that. Here, I'm going to actually create a new dome light and I'm going to put the image sequence from the actual scene in. And I believe this is going to set the coffee cup better into the scene. I'll show both to give you a better comparison. And as you can see, this does a much better job of setting the coffee cup into the scene. From here, I'm going to do a few more tweaks and pretty much just wrap up. All right, now I'm doing a few more adjustments. I'm just gonna fast forward through this part to save my time. So now we are working on compositing. So I am going to turn the background on my HDR eye off or my dome light. Then I'm gonna go into the camera and turn that background uh, image off. Perfect, now we're starting to get everything on alpha. And I'm just gonna make sure that the lighting is right turn it back off and this is what my alpha channel looks like currently a big tip is to ensure that alpha channel is checked under regular images even if you don't save out any regular images um, I don't know why they have it like that also ensure that you hit command D or control D to ensure that your sequence is the same as the footage you need to also ensure that you change that in the settings to match up I'm going to make a few more tweaks, but overall, this is it. Hopefully, this is a good beginning guide to how to composite objects into your scene using the camera calibrator tool. All right, guys, if you made it to the end, I just want to say thank you. Um, if you like the video, definitely drop me a like below. Drop me a comment if you have any questions. You can follow me on Instagram at girlyouparched, G-I-R-L-U parched. And you can also follow my website at www.dropframe.studio. Definitely looking forward to talking to some of you guys. Until next time.